Hi guys, Crad here. In this video, I want to talk to you about the newest offering from Big Knives, the Big Gotti. The name is a play on the Bugatti Veyron, which is a, a very impressive supercar. And in a way, that's exactly what this knife is. It is a super knife uh, made with incredibly impressive materials and um, super fine details and built for performance. So this knife uh, debuted about a week ago at the NYX uh, New York Custom Knife Show which is now in New Jersey due to the ridiculously uh, strict knife laws in New York City. So I went there, um, well primarily to see friends new and old but specifically with the intent to pick up a big Audi actually uh, traded shifts with somebody at work and was able to uh, ride down to the show with a friend that lives here in Connecticut and um, got to meet a lot of people that I've only uh, talked to online before and uh, over the years I've never had a chance to meet in person being uh, well living out in Hawaii this whole time so uh, this knife, when I got to the table, there were only uh, two on the table that were still available, and they are both um, the blue gold anodization pattern. Um, something that they're incorporating a lot into um, the Begatis are the different textures that they uh, first debuted on the um, field grade bodega. I had to think of what it's called. So now they're uh, doing those same textures uh, directly into the titanium instead of uh, onto G10 slabs. And it was actually something that I didn't realize until I was talking to Tom Crane. But this is not an inlay. He picked up on that right away. Um, this is actually milled uh, directly into the handle of the knife. This texturing. I thought I had seen pictures on Instagram, I guess they were just of um, the original bodega, but I thought I would seen pictures with this all milled out and everything, so I thought they were using two separate pieces of titanium and inlaying this. But uh, no, this is, this is all one huge chunk of titanium here. But this is actually dual anodized. So they bead blast the whole knife, anodize it blue, then they polish off um, the textured part to give it the shiny appearance and then they re-anodize it gold and due to the gold being a lower voltage uh, it doesn't interfere with the blue anodization at all. Um, Tom actually picked up on that based on just these little tiny parts that you can you can maybe hopefully pick up on the video where it's still got a little bit of uh, bead blasted blue just on the a couple of these ridges I imagine because they're uh, in quite a hurry to get some of these made for the knife show. Um, yeah, so there are about 15 of these in existence, plus the one, uh, the prototype that Todd Big kept for himself. There were actually two of these gold ones on the table when I got there, and they were the only two available for sale. All the others on the table were knives that people had already uh, bought and paid for, but they were leaving there just uh, so that big knives would have uh, some big goddies to show off for people who were arriving late. Um, out of the two, I noticed that one of them had a, a very stiff uh, detent, and I uh, brought that up to Mark, and um, they decided not to sell that one. So there's one that they actually took home with them because uh, certain issues with the detent but the detent on this one is perfect along with the IKBS this uh, blade just flies out flips very well Let's see if I can get some light in here you can see where they've milled pockets out of the titanium just to make it uh, a little bit lighter well, of course the light doesn't want to hit it to where you can see hopefully that's showing up there uh, something to note, unlike the bodegas, there's no cracked ice uh, anywhere on this Bigotti. 
they have um, instead a file work texture on the backspacer came out very nice on the underside it's stone washed the clip is stone washed the blade is stone washed let's talk a little bit about the blade it is one quarter inch thick carpenter XHP steel which is a super steel um, I'm not a steel expert there are a lot of people on YouTube who do different breakdowns of the steel and their performance characteristics and all of that good stuff so long as it uh, doesn't cause me any problems um, I'm, I'm pretty happy with whatever steel uh, maker decides to use and I know uh, big knives isn't going to cheap out on the steel so this has dual foolers which gives it a very futuristic look uh, they debuted a new um, logo to sort of differentiate their DNC line, their damn near custom line of knives from uh, the Todd Big Customs. It features a very impressive compound ground blade. Um, something that I, I do like about this compound grind here is that the actual uh, primary bevel, the cutting edge here, is uh, one continuous sweep. So when I go to sharpen this, the fact that it's compound ground isn't going to cause me any problem sharpening the knife. Sort of show just how smooth this is. So the, the heavy weight of the blade combined with the smoothness just makes it fall right in there. It has a ball bearing in the clip just like the bodega which uh, makes it glide into your pocket but uh, definitely gives it enough grip retention that I'm not worried about it falling out. This comes in at 9.7 ounces on my postal scale and that's without the um, gray precision triple seven bead and the lanyard so that's just the knife by itself on the table they had three big oddies where they didn't do the uh, traditional uh, big holes in the fullers thought that was kind of interesting It's more or less the same dimensions as the Bodega. It's just thicker and a, you know, a good bit fancier. I kind of like, um, kind of like the silver and blue one, the one where they didn't anodize this. So when they hit the website, I might actually consider uh, selling this one, just because ever since I've been a little kid, I've always liked uh, sort of a silver and blue color scheme even though it may not be quite as impressive as this uh, golden blue anodization job the lockup is quite perfect it's a little bit sticky um, which is of course normal and I actually like it um, I don't know when I was at the table Mark was telling me oh, you know I should take a pencil and put a little bit of graphite on the lock face um, just to keep it from sticking. I told him it's probably all on my head, but to me uh, a sticky lock just means, you know, it, it's very fresh. It has a lot of um, room to break in. So, to me that's just a, an indication that the knife has a lot of life left in it. Let's do a little bit of uh, size comparison here with a couple other knives. So the obvious choice would be uh, the Bodega. Now I haven't actually done a video on this Bodega. I had a Lightning Strike carbon fiber one. Um, so you might notice my Bodega has changed a little bit. And uh, maybe I should do a video on that later. But here you can see it's more or less the same dimensions. But the Bigotti is a good deal thicker. Quite a bit heavier as well.
So either one would be a, a really great choice. Either one I would highly recommend. But maybe just sort of how beefy you prefer your knife to be would be the determining factor. Honestly, if I could only have one, it'd be I'd have a very hard time uh, deciding, I think, between the two. Here is an Emerson Humvee K, which by all standards has a very thick blade stock, but does not compare to the one quarter inch thick blade stock of the Begati. Zero Tolerance Triple Seven. Very similar in length, not remotely similar in weight. In my original Lightning Strike Carbon Fiber um, Bodega video, I made comparisons between the Bodega and this knife, and comparisons between these two knives aren't really warranted. Um, I think it's just because I got both of them within a few days of each other, but uh, they're really, you know, comparing apples to oranges. So I would like to take that back. <laughs> and here is uh, compared to my stealth homage. So although this is a heavily um, modified knife, the blade stock, uh, the actual thickness is that of uh, a production Emerson knife. So for thickness alone you can sort of compare there. So just a few closing thoughts here on the Begati. Um, it's a very amazing knife. It feels wonderful in hand. Like it just feels like an extension of your hand. Um, Todd Bake really knows how to design a comfortable handle. Um, it's kind of a term that's overused, but uh, fits perfectly for this knife. It is a very organic feel. It just uh, feels like it flows naturally into your hand. It feels very solid, uh, durable, well constructed, near flawless. It's very sharp out of package. Clearly a lot of uh, thought and design and testing went into uh, this design, essentially for the bodega, but um, definitely there were no changes that were made uh, to the design to make the Begati that made it any worse. Um, definitely only improvements. If you know about the bodega, you already know that these two pieces here are separate. Um, the back piece is where the lock bar is built in and um, in theory if over time the knife were to wear down the lock bar was no longer locking up um, this piece alone could be replaced and uh, essentially make it like a brand new knife. I've never heard of anyone wearing out uh, one of their frame locks in such a manner that would be necessary but uh, worth noting. I always get told I don't flip my knives often enough in the course of the video, so let me get a few, a few in right now. Flips perfectly. The detent is uh, perfectly set, so. Um, 
by the time that you push down hard enough to overcome the detent, uh, you got enough force behind it where the blade is going to fly open perfectly. You'd be hard pressed to uh, hitting the camera here. You'd be hard pressed to not get the blade to fully deploy if you've got enough pressure in there to overcome the detent. Of course, you could do it if you're sitting there trying, but it's uh, not going to be a problem where the blade doesn't fully deploy when you want it to. Hey guys, let me know if you have any questions. Thank you for watching.